when TEDx is happening. I, uh, I'm not a professional speaker, let me start by saying this. And I have very less skills to present myself in front of such eminent personalities in front of me today. But I'll try my best to communicate to you all uh, through which we'll understand each other. Well, before I start, I would want to recite something in front of you that I had penned down and uh, which I will repeat uh, towards the end of my speech and then I would want you to realize the motive behind me writing this down. So, here I go. I have stumbled hard. I have bitterly fought. I have cried nights over the names I have been called. No matter what I gave, it all got forgotten. But the perseverance of my heart could never be beaten. Pain became a better lover, chiseled me nice and well. Failure became an unfading teacher, shaped me bolder and wise. The day I stood up alone and walked chin up. The day I held myself and drenched in self-love. A phoenix was born from life, ashes, and dirt. It was my metamorphosis. It was my rebirth. I wrote this poem because it relates somewhere to all of our lives. But uh, now, let me start by asking that, do you remember, I want you all to remember all the life struggle and the pain that you have gone through to reach where you are today. You are a wonderful scholars, eminent educationists, writer, bloggers, wonderful business persons, teachers, eminent personalities over here. And we all know the struggle that you have gone through to reach over here where you are today. And I want you to applaud for yourself. You are all great hearts. You have also fan following. You have your friends with you. You have your family with you. You have your loved ones with you. You are surrounded by, a, by the crowd, but oh wait. I want you to think right now that when you go back home, when you close the door, when you look yourself at the mirror, when you go away from the maddening crowd, do you ever, ever, ever ask yourself, nobody knows how I'm dealing with life. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Have you ever? I have gone through this. No formal institution in this world can teach you how to go through life. Life has no blueprint, my dear friends. Life has no blueprints. It teaches you lessons in hard way and we have learned it. But why wait right now to teach our youngsters the lessons of life, the skills of life that we had learned very late in our life through hard ways? I constantly get in touch with my uh, with the uh, parents of uh, uh, my students who complain that uh, or who are concerned. I would rather use this word that, ma'am, we are not worried about uh, the career. We know that our children will do better in their life, will be good professionals. But what we are concerned about is they are not able to handle failure. They are becoming obsessively image conscious. They are being brainwashed by the digital propaganda and they are becoming alienated from the family. Yes, these are the concerns of the parents right now. When we have, we have the quote by Jim Carrey, you all know Jim Carrey, I would want to rephrase the quote and he says that everyone should be rich, everyone should be famous and accomplish whatever you have dreamt of just to know that that is not the answer. That is not the answer, children. Today, over here, I'm going to tell you about myself and about several other people, about the struggles that we have faced and the barriers that we have crossed, just to make you realize that being the best of professional is not the end of life. Having a gratifying life, having a complete life is more important. Being happy is more important. Ending your life on, on the resting bed, just a smile on your face is what is going to matter to you all. We have seen efficient, eminent personalities who are wonderful musicians, brilliant artists, committing suicides or seeking devastating ways. Weren't they skilled personalities? If they were so efficient to become successful, to become rich, to become popular, then why at all did they become disoriented and disillusioned? What was lacking? 
I am a part of a generation and I am also breeding a generation that has more trust issues, that are more lone, that are lonelier souls, that are more disillusioned, that are more disoriented, that are more aggressive in the behavior and more abusive in the attitude. Right now, I'm going to talk about some of the skills that are the necessity, that are the need of the hour of the 20th century. And before that, I would like to say that no formal institution can take this responsibility alone. No ways. They cannot take this responsibility alone. The cradle of the society, that is the family, has to be an equal participant in this. So I invoke all the formal and informal institutions of the world right now to get together and give our future generation, our youngsters, a future, not just a good future, but a gratifying and a full and complete future. So let's go towards the modern skills that I think uh, is necessary. So these are something uh, just like, you know, the handful of stars that I have chosen uh, from the vast uh, uh, number of uh, skills that I think and you think is needed uh, in this 20th century. So the first one, I think that you should stand alone to make a difference. Tell me. The first thing that you do in the morning when you get up, the immediate thing that you do in the morning that you get up, most of you would agree to the fact that, uh, even I confess, that uh, I search more for my cell phone. I search for my cell phone. I cannot stay without my cell phone. And if you, if you literally uh, think about yourself, you'll feel that, can I be away from digitalization? Can I be away from the digital, from the technology? Well, let our inner sense say that, yes, we cannot be. Why? Because we are in a constant search of company. We are in a constant search of a crowd around us. We are in a constant search of instant gratification that we can get from the sense of belongingness. We want to belong all the time. We have trained our senses, we have conditioned our senses so much that we need a crowd and being with ourselves scares us now. It's terrible. How can we stay alone? No. We have now brought up a kind of generation that is not fuller in itself. We need another individual to feel complete. How can two half individuals come together and be full? I have no idea about that. I would want to say that uh, uh, we can. We have to, we must invest in the skill of learning how to love ourselves. No, I'm not telling you to meditate or adopt uh, an ascetic way of life. No, 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 it's not needed. I, uh, uh, I'm not into that yogic culture, uh, pardon me. But we can be, we can train ourselves to come out of the anxiety of uh, being with ourselves. There are so many things that we can do independently. I learned the way of life. I started learning to know the world. And when I started traveling alone, when I started exploring alone, I did not need the sanction the sanctity of the society i you can soak yourself in introspection you can think about uh, a lot of things you can do something creative or oh, else just date yourself i mean what's what's the problem so i just want to say that the social media is not making you friendlier it is making you lonelier it is enslaving you it is taking away the freedom from you in the true sense of freedom. So please throw away the mobile phones and spend quality time with yourself. Next, I would want to talk about the next skill that is the basic ingredient of our life and that is love. Yesterday, I asked some of my ninth class students that, uh, what is your opinion about love? Yes, uh, as an English teacher, we have this option of asking such kind of questions to our students and I love it. So I asked my students, what is your opinion about love? And uh, they were stupefied that uh, ma'am asked this kind of question and their reluctance actually made me feel as if I'm talking about something tabooed. Tell me, why are we so open about hatred? Why can we speak about hatred? Why can we show hatred so openly but why can't we speak of love openly? We have adopted a very wrong notion of love. We have adopted a very wrong notion of love. 
We are loving material, we are loving things right now and we are using human whereas it should be the other way around. I uh, would want to state an instance where uh, um, one of my friends told me that, uh, Amash me, uh, you know nobody gives me love, nobody gives me love. I told him that, uh, do you think you give love? He said that, no, you know what, uh, love is the, uh, I'm not successful so nobody will love me. I'm not rich so nobody will love me. Exactly. We have this wrong notion of love. We think that love is the byproduct of accomplishment. We think that if we become successful, if we become rich, if we become popular, our parents will love us, our friends will love us, our, our partner will love us. This is wrong. We need to teach our younger generation and the younger generation must and must understand the love begets success and not the other way around. Love is not a byproduct but the foundation of existence. Rather than expecting love from others, start loving yourself. So, my dear youngsters, love yourself, love your family, love the needy, love your foes, love your friends, love your neighbors, love yourself, love those who do everything and love those who do nothing. Love without eyes, love without seeing. As John Lennon says that uh, all you need is love. So that brings me uh, to a next instance and that is how learn to be proud of how you look. Now I will tell you an instance from my childhood. Um, I, uh, I, I was born to a very conservative family. Um, I was the first child from my family who was enrolled in a co-education school. I still remember the first day I went to my TV school. I'm very proud of my alma mater. I stood uh, outside the class and I was wearing a long skirt, a loose uh, shirt and I had perfectly oiled hair with two ponies. I used to look very dark because I never thought that taking care of your looks hardly ma I mean, ever mattered. And I had a lot of dreams and expectations in my eyes that I would make friends, wonderful friends. And what do I see? I see mannequins in front of me, porcelain dogs, wonderfully shampooed hair flowing in the air and uh, perfectly boggy, body hugging dresses, a short skirt and I was like oh my god and imagine they were looking at me as if I was an animal out of the zoo. <laughs> then and there I was not a human anymore. Then and there I was animalized. I was made a creature from a human being. For two years I was bullied. I was bullied really bad. I was a wonderful debater before I came to that school. But gradually, I lost my self-esteem. I could not invest in my studies. But thankfully, it was due to the help of some of my teachers that I gained my confidence back. I started speaking. I started uh, presenting myself on stage. And my ugliness, the ugliness, the standardized norm of beauty of the society was forgotten. And I was accepted again. All stories doesn't have a happy ending. All stories, they don't have a happy ending. I have never heard a mother saying, Mira samla bachcha ta kitna sundar dikh raha hai. I've never heard a parent saying, Mira beta to samli bahu leke ghar aega. I've never heard a partner saying that, Oh, my chubby partner looks so good. We all glorify Victoria models. We all glorify those skinny rap models. We all glorify Barbies. We never glorify somebody who has got a lot of talent but looks ugly. Look at all the K-pop stars. You have movies of uh, 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 200 pound beauty and everything based on it. Again, just like love, we have a very wrong notion of beauty. Beauty comes from here. Beauty comes from the inner core. Imagine a very rude person, untalented, mannerless, jobless, and he just looks beautiful. He just looks handsome. What is the worth of it? Our young youngsters need to realize the fact that beauty is being a beautiful self. Beauty is being an empathetic self, of being a generous self, being a loving and caring self. Everything else is a facade. Everything else is a facade. You get a cosmetic surgery, you can buy beauty for yourself. But believe me, you cannot buy a beautiful heart. 
So that makes me come to the next skill, which obviously all the skills is uh, connected to each other. And the next skill, I will tell you how they are interconnected. And an, an assertive know, they should know how to deal with the world outside. And all starts with the family values over here. And right now, I'm going to come towards the end of my modern skills. And I think that we need it at the earliest. We need to learn it at the earliest. And that is how to handle your failures. We have all been, we have all gone through failures, haven't we? Can anybody in this room tell me that I have never failed in my life? Imagine a life where you are walking so very cautiously, so, so cautiously that every step you take is because you don't want to make a mistake. You are not allowed to take risks because you might make a mistake. What a life is that? It is a failure in itself. It's a failure in itself. Life is all about taking risks. Believe me, children, I have been trampled. I have been crushed in my life so many times that it has changed the geography, the physiology of my career, my relationships, my family. My failures have crushed me. They have trampled me. They have driven me to the verge of madness. And But they have reincarnated, reincarnated me as a survivor. I'm a happier soul, more wild wiser soul, a more a generous soul, empathetic soul, because I have seen failure. Failure, when we talk about failure, we feel that it's full of agony, it's full of bitterness, it's full of regretfulness, it, it's full of low esteem. Yes, but we all go through this thing. You cannot learn from life if you don't see failure at all. How can you be wiser? How can you be more generous? you will be full of ego, which is wrong again. So let your failure, learn to make your failure your reincarnation. Learn to make your failure, failure your metamorphosis and learn to make your failure your rebirth. 